Okay, so normally I, I start off the episodes with a joke, and people go, oh, ha, and then the episode starts. But I uh, I figure in keeping with the spirit of Santa Inc., I wrote a pretty bad joke <laughs> to start off this episode. So here we go. Santa Inc., more like Santa Stink. I think you need a fuck in there. Well, it's do you want to be really you go for it. You do your version. All right, Santa Inc., Santa fucking stinks. Welcome to Bottle Episodes. <laughs> Welcome to Bottle Episodes. Hi, I'm David Piccolomini. I'm Daniel Crow. Still ashamed of that joke I just made. And this week we're joined by... (laughs) Kenise Mobley, hello! <laughs> Hi, Kenise. Uh, welcome to Bottle Episodes, uh, the show where we watch uh, two episodes of a really bad TV show. We watch the pilot and the top-rated episode on IMDb to see if it got any better. And this week, we did Santa Inc. in Christmas Spirit. You have a pained look on your face. Okay. <laughs> so I thought I, I initially when we discussed this, I went to uh, just watch, which tells me where things are streaming. I type. OK, what I do is I type into Google. Where is it streaming? And it knows you mean just watch. And so it takes me to them. Yeah. And so it said it was on Max. And I was like, oh, interesting. And then it was like, no, it's not on Max. It's on Tubi. Like we we dumped it. It doesn't exist. It We hit it. This is we hit it on Tubi. Yes. That's yeah. They that's what I think is going to happen to a lot of these shows that are being like taken off streaming services and sold at a loss or whatever. They're just going to move to Tubi and like Roku dot com. Yeah, I mean, I like I like the fact that with Tubi, I didn't have to sign up or anything. But yeah. Also, I saw some of the like uh, little boxes, the windows for other things that are on Tubi, and I was like, wow. So we're just putting anything up. Aren't we? Okay. Ooh, what did you any 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 standouts? More so the when Eclectic. the level of Photoshop is so bad <laughs> that you're like, oh, I know that this is not a good movie. Like just the Photoshop <laughs> alone tells me that they didn't have a budget to do this. When, could- when I opened Tubi, the first thing it asked me was like, do you want to watch King Richard? And I was like, what? I I was like, it'd be nice to watch an Oscar winning film. No, I'm going right to Santa Inc. Though. <laughs> <laughs> and then I watched an hour of Santa Inc. <laughs> Either way, they are just metaphors for father's abuse. Um, would you call Santa a father figure in this? I uh, yeah, kind of. I mean, he's the president. Do you consider Joe Biden a father figure? Uh, well, as a Delawarean, yes. Oh, okay, oh yeah. right, 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 yeah. right. <laughs> not right now <laughs> no, okay i was like maybe i don't know your life you'd, you'd be like super into joe biden yeah no I, mean, I don't know anyone who feels that way but. we're both from delaware and i think our basic feeling on biden is uh it's pretty cool for delaware but uh you know <laughs> it's not it, it's a good representation of our state in being wholly mediocre okay yeah yeah, yeah. We put the mid and mid Atlantic. Yeah, nice, definitely. <laughs> I have driven through Delaware many times, and I've never stopped. So. Well, yeah. that's pretty much what everyone says. Yeah. Yep, yeah. that is our catchphrase. That should be on our license plate. I think I paid a toll through there once. That's yes. something people <laughs> yeah. say a lot. Yeah. You guys take my money, but yeah. yeah, there's a very easy way to get around that toll. Take the train. <laughs> no, if you're, if you're driving down ninety five, we we are not doing okay, very local fine. toll I'm voyage. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna not describe how to avoid that toll. You guys, I, like, I, I take the Amtrak and I don't pay toll. You have a Google Maps. You can yeah. figure out how to avoid a toll. Yeah, are we I'm not. Probably, we should probably talk about Santa Inc. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are avoiding the inevitable. God. I get that. Cadiz, first impressions on Santa Inc. Okay, uh. It was not surprising when you told me who had made this. Um, it was giving strong sausage party vibes. Yeah. A thing where it was like, oh, I guess people in the industry like this person, so they gave them money to make something. But did they hire writers? Did they hire like someone to give it a second pass? Or was this just... I like Seth Rogen, but sometimes he makes these things that are like, did you just kind of like fart into a bong and then someone were like, go turn this into something to someone else? Or like- First of all, fart bong is a masterpiece and I will not, I'm kidding. Okay, but you, like, you looked- thing. He you- also didn't <laughs> create or write this. What? Yeah. yeah. He has a voice in it? Yeah. Then why is it like Sausage Party in that it's just like, <laughs> yeah. hear stupid jokes and we say well, fuck a lot. I don't it- even know if there are jokes. It's just cursing and pretending that's jokes. 
Is it for 14 year olds? I mean, there are, there are, I, you know, those 14 yes. year olds that love the struggle of women in the workplace. <laughs> The ones that are all about that. Yeah, I that's mean, why it's okay. doing so well. So Seth Rogen is an executive producer on the show. Okay. So he is clearly having like input on it. And generally, though, I like a lot of the shows he EPs and stuff. Like Future Man, also uh, Invincible he works Never on. Never saw any of those. The boys, he does stuff oh, on. Right. I saw, I saw. So it's a lot of, they're doing a lot of effective gross out humor. Mm-hmm. Which is uh, which I do like when it's done well, but then yeah, this one it just didn't work. Uh, the person who created it also made Shrill. They were the showrunner for Shrill. I like Shrill. They produce on Parks and Rec. I like Parks and Rec. Yeah, and Love. I never watched that. Yeah, it's fine. Okay. I mean, the thing we've learned about doing this podcast is pretty much every bad TV show was created by someone who had knocked it out of the park a couple times. That's before. why they got to create this yeah. thing. Or never got to try again. Sometimes it's yeah. like someone who created a bunch of good TV shows and right in the middle, you know, they did Cop Rock or something like What's that. What's Cop Rock? Oh, well, I have listeners can refer back to episode three about <laughs> Cop Rock what, with special it? guest Chris Hamilton. Uh, the guy that made uh, like Doogie Howser oh. and a million different shows as well. Do you make Hill Street no, Blues? Yeah, it was Hill Street Blues. He's Stephen yeah. Bacho. He's, uh, he's NYPD he, Blue. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then he made, he made a cop musical. Yeah. A cop musical. Yes. I wonder. Okay. Sorry. I'm just like, who was asking for that? Who was like, we, we want cops, but we want. Well, Randy Newman dancing. was asking. He needed a paycheck oh, for all God. the music. Okay. Also, Stephen Bacha was asking. He was like, hey, can someone let me do my cop musical? That's yeah. who was asking. <laughs> they're like, you made NYPD Blue. All sure. right, sure. No, NYPD Blue was in the future. They still gave him chances after cop. What? Work. He was. He had been doing, he had been crushing it. Like, the, he like hadn't missed. Uh-huh. And then cop rock. And then. Yeah. And in some and then ways, the creator. Didn't miss again. <laughs> in okay. some ways, the creator of San Inc. had been on a roll. She'd been making stuff that people really liked for years. Such as? Like, she was a true. writer, producer on... Parks and Rec before yeah. what uh, all those things you just Platonic, listed. Platonic, shrill, Parks and Rec, love, friends uh, from college. And in the middle of that, Santa Inc. Okay, friends from college is one of those shows where I have seen, I think, two seasons of it and have no idea why. I don't like it, but I watched it. It went down very easy in that what happened, I don't totally know. It's not that sounds like a depression show. Yeah. That's like, I do that. Like, I've seen four seasons of Person of Interest. Could I tell you what happened on it? Not really. Sin Inc. Also a depression show in that it gave me depression. <laughs> oh, yeah, there, there. Uh, like, okay, so there's not jokes. They just curse. Um, the story seems like, oh, fuck, what's going on? Uh, let's have a 45-year-old's, no, a 55-year-old's wet dream about millennials. And there's a literal snowflake as an assistant. And it's just like... Shut up. You're old. These jokes are bad. Uh. <laughs> I, I didn't even, you know, I didn't watch the finale or anything, but I, from the pilot, know exactly how the story is going to unfold. Yeah, shocking. For the shocking. whole season. And it has so many good people in it, and that's one thing that frustrates the shit out of me. Like, a it lot also of people looks that nice. I like. Yeah. yeah. It looks to me like Robot Chicken, but I'm a judgmental person. I think it uh, that's, has a that's... little, it's better than Robot Chicken for sure. It okay. looks like all those old Rankin Bass specials. Oh. It's doing like the old Rudolph thing yeah. with it, but it's just, it's like, basically it feels like all of their what if questions for the show came to these very weird dissonant pieces. It's like, what if, I guess also just what if everybody was an asshole yeah. is the whole show. Is anyone nice in it? Uh, no. Everybody's like selfish and an asshole. And I guess that's it's missing that little piece of heart. Yeah. Yeah. I It's missing a lot of things, I think. <laughs> um, good. Goodness. Good quality. Quality. That's the word. Quality. Yeah. yeah. Well, but it's it's that it's so close to being a good show. I can't. I understand where everybody's like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen, but all the pieces of it make sense. You have like really good people writing it. You have really good people making it. And then everything is just a little bit off in that it ta- like, it's like eating imitation pizza. We probably should explain what the show is for anyone yeah. unaware. Yeah. All right. Fair. Uh- <laughs> Cause you're not going to watch this. You're going to listen to us talk about it. And ideally you won't watch it because you shouldn't do that to yourself. So, uh, there is a elf named Candy Smalls, played by Sarah Silverman. Oh, oh, yeah, that that's a stripper name, right? Candy Smalls. That's I weird. think you just associate the name Candy with uh, strippers. No, I associate it with my favorite song by Mandy Moore. 
<laughs> that is a great song. Um, but this is now Mandy Moore podcast. I, just, I mean, it feels like they're doing a vague Biggie Smalls. I, but why would they do that? It's truly because she's small. Yeah, like they didn't think about this deeply. <laughs> they're like, she's sweet and she's small. Candy Smalls. That's her name. Yeah, yeah she made. She almost was. She was almost Candy Sweets. I actually did. That's probably better. Candy Sweets. Yes. At least it's thematically that both of them are together. She's in charge of the candy department at the North Pole. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is she really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a in taffy the taffy incident. In oh the- yeah, yeah, the taffy. Okay. I assume general administration. Okay. She is. She is interested in being considered for the top spot after the departure of some other guy. Was it David Allen Greer? I don't Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows. Yes. Not literally. It wasn't like Tim Meadows was the character. He was no, the plot. That'd would, be great if the, if the plot line was Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows is next in line to be Santa. He's in this weird claymation thing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um so wait, then the the guy he goes to work for Amazon, which is how I know that this wasn't going to be an Amazon show because they have a weird depiction of Jeff Bezos. And then she he santa's like oh i'm thinking about who's gonna be the next santa this is the show yeah and then this is her being like okay well how do i get considered um it's they're doing like a female president allegory you know what's weird you brought up jeff bezos when you're asking is there anyone nice in this show jeff bezos is the nicest guy in this show he just gives a guy a job he just gives a guy a job for no reason for being really qualified, he works for Santa. Yeah. I guess, but yeah. So actually, Jeff Bezos is. <laughs> think about that for a second. <laughs> That's He's the up. nicest guy in the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they try to write him off as a villain, but all we see is Jeff Bezos very plainly. They go, Would you like a job? Yeah. It pays better than your current one. Do you like working for Seth Rogen's Santa Claus? No, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Come work for yeah. Amazon. <laughs> Honestly, the North Pole might be one of the few places that's more abusive than Amazon. Yeah. yeah. For its workforce. Yeah, that woman gets trapped in Taffy for a day before anyone loves it. She loves it. She She's loves like, it. Thank yeah. goodness I have wanted the ability to rest. And I love the simple, very simple characterization. That character is a mom. Yeah. The other yeah. character is horny. Um, Which, I think all characters are horny to a degree in this show. Yes, I yeah. love that she talks to her mom about getting fucked and her dad about getting or grandpa about getting fucked. Like, she also sees her mother fully nude in the next episode. Yeah, I don't. St- I maybe I'm conservative <laughs> in this way. I'm sorry. I don't want to know that my mom has the hots for some guy and wants to fuck this bunny real hard. I don't want to know that my grandfather is like willfully trying to get it in on street corners. I don't want to know that. It's interesting that you bring up that this show, you know, brought up the conservative in you because one of the reasons it has such a terrible rating was from like a big right wing backlash against it. Oh yeah, that, they that hate implies this show. there was a lash for it. For there to be a backlash, there has to be a front. Well, lash. there was some some of a forward lash because okay. it HBO. is rated one point seven rather than just one. Yeah. So there are some people that gave it above a one rating. Well, the no, thing- what it is is the forward lash was HBO going, "Hey guys, do you want to watch this show?" And then there was a backlash of people being like, "Fuck no, no we don't." <laughs> and it seemed like a lot of the backlash against it was from people who didn't like that there were Jewish people involved in a Christmas show. Excuse yeah. me? Of all that's the things truly... we're mad at this show yeah, about. That, like, that's not at all a concern. And all, weren't there, there have been Jewish people involved with all of our Christmas materials. Oh, yeah. Materials. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? I watched this thing on uh, on Netflix that was like about how they made Elf. I think it was Elf. And the writer was like, yeah, I'm Jewish. All your favorite Christmas movies are written yes. by Jewish people. We love Christmas movies was pretty much what he was saying. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. This, though, is... It's so funny because it's just front facing Jewish with Sarah Silverman and Seth Rogen. So what? They had Except, to, yeah. you, YouTube literally had to shut down the like they that's where hide comments came from and like the down vote. They like got rid of the down vote button. They they got rid of that from that video because they were like, This is gonna be a nightmare to deal with. Oh my it, God. It's it's just so weird that we are agreeing with them that it's a one star show, but for different reasons. Yes. <laughs> Like, watch the show and know that it is bad yeah. versus just voting it because it has Jewish people. That's the thing. When we started to watch it, I kind of expected, because the point of the podcast is to see if maybe a maligned show is better than people give it credit for. Fair. And I expected this to be better than its rating. No. 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 It it earned that, that rating, but yeah. not... 
Not for the reasons it got it. I think it is better than a 1.7. I think this is about as bad as this concept can be done. Yeah. (laughs) I'm agreeing with it. It has professional production (laughs) values, but you need to rate it on how they actually did the thing they set out to do. On the execution of the actual concept. And I went into this thinking, I think women should be able to hold any position. And now I don't think they should be allowed to be Santa, at least. Wow. <laughs> like, they actively worked against what they said. Jeez. I mean, it, yeah, it was. I'm not going to watch the other episodes. And often, I'm a completist. I try to watch all of a thing. But with this, I'm like, I love myself. My time is valuable. I don't need to do this. Yeah. <laughs> You're just going to go watch Friends from College again? Uh, I hope not. I don't think I'm in that place anymore. <laughs> I don't think I'm suffering through depression in that way. Um, I have got so there's too much television right now. Yes. And they like they released a bunch of stuff. I'm still watching uh, The Last of Us. So like I'm, oh I'm my God, way behind. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry we made you catch Watched. up with this. I have like one more episode and I'm just like. I don't know if I can do it. I know it's now, gonna be sad. How would you feel if in The Last of Us there were just uh, randomly introduced horny cursing reindeer? I'd probably be pissed off about it, but yeah. I would be confused at their sentience. Like, oh, if we can have sentient reindeer, but these mushroom people aren't sentient. This is complicated. Okay. Yeah. Also, they were like, there was a WNBA of reindeer. Was what? there? Yeah, there was like the women's league that like had to wait every year, and oh, like, they were just yeah, the they were the understudies. The, the, the yeah, they're the squad. Yeah. But it is just like a weird. Yeah, I was making I was be I was making it more of a joke. I thought there was literally a WNBA yeah, joke that I missed. Um, yeah, they briefly say that. I just the it is interesting <laughs> to watch a show where yeah they do things so poorly, even though it does have the star cachet, the visual like. The visuals are there. The star cachet is there. And then uh, just say fucking. If, the, if if you don't have something funny to say, just say fucking or balls or some bullshit. And that's why I asked if it was for 14-year-olds. Which is why we should really start adding that into our podcast. It really might up our yeah. our viability. People you, might find this funnier. third sentence has to say that, have to, has to have fucking in it. I think it was every third word. Yeah. And I like, I, I curse. I'm a, I, I live in a city. I'm a, I'm a lady, whatever. But yeah. like... The idea of these people cursing that much in a work environment, I was like, absolutely not. Or at breakfast with their mom. Yeah. <laughs> when meeting the Easter Bunny because you have a job offer from the Easter Bunny. Yeah. Why would your mom be there? Why is she talking about her vagina? I was just like, hey. She she came the, she went there by force. She no nothing was going to stop her from getting fucked by that rabbit. It's interesting that you think uh, her name might be in reference to Biggie Smalls because she curses more than Biggie Smalls. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I. <laughs> it is funny for us to ha- be on a show and be like, you know what? Too much cursing for my taste. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I we is... all do stand up comedy. <laughs> like, that has not happened to me. That has not been a concern of any show. But this I was like, <laughs> and it, I think it would be funny like, if they were jokes within that cursing, but for it to just be cursing, I just. Yeah. Like, yeah, are you absolutely. are you the thick of it? Can you turn cursing into an yes. art form? Yeah, because that's I the only way that I show, looks... but I know about that. Yeah, that's it's uh, the team that made Veep later. Yes, and I all watched that. Yeah, Veep and did they have something to do with? Um... Maybe I watched the movie. It's not important. <laughs> there was a movie spun <laughs> off. I saw the movie in the loop. I didn't. Yeah. Yes, I saw it in yeah. the loop. I didn't see the thick of it. Yes. So that's like you all needed to know that that was an important departure to take on this podcast. Well, it is because you can watch those and you can see people that are using cursing very effectively for yes. humor. Yes. In... So... you can do it artfully and hilariously yeah and this one is just adding a lot of like what if we added what if we made the north pole hornier yeah yeah that's really i would say that's a majority of the questions asked i think the real Ew. reason this has such a low rating because the people that would love this show uh love christmas a lot <laughs> and would see this as an attack like this has a brickleberry audience i don't know what brickleberry is uh it's a cartoon with daniel tosh where he's he's a bear correct yeah, yeah. it's like it's, it's like dirty yogi bear right that makes sense oh if i Is showed you very it... good no oh, okay uh, <laughs> uh it's it's very much uh there was there's been like five of these shows if you like if i pulled up on netflix it's mm-hmm. like it's a very distinct animation style okay of this like uh very like 
kind of crude thing. And there's an audience for it. People keep watching these shows. There was one, Paradise PD. That's one of the mm, other ones. I think I've heard of it. Okay. If I showed you, you'd see the picture. Right. You'd get the... It just makes me so mad that there is such an audience for this, that they continue to make this. But then, like, there are very good things that will never get made. I mean, like, th- this only lasts the one season, so it's good. not like there was really an audience. Well, good. So that's what I was saying, though, is the audience for this show also loves Christmas enough that they'd be like, how dare you take on Christmas like this? Ugh, I'm sorry. So, so and so, so they're yeah, they're not doing subtlety and nuance. No. Or of depth that. of any kind. So the, it just relies on people who like all these very talented people to be like, oh, yeah, let's check it. Oh, no. No. Not this no. time. I'm trying to imagine the person that would love this. Um, and I'm really having a hard time picturing them. Uh, okay. I, I, I have it in my brain. Oh, and this no. is This is me being unkind. Okay? Go for it. I was in a cooking class once with a guy who's from the Midwest. He's in a cooking class with his mom and he kept making jokes the whole time. And it was clear he was like in his early 20s or something. And it was like, oh, you don't know what actual funny is. So you're just like hitting the cadences of it. I think he would love this show. Like there's something we're like, a, there's a piece missing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And if you have that piece missing, maybe you will appreciate this. But that sort of person with like a piece missing in their brain is probably the also the sort of person that's going to see a story and be like, I don't watch anything with a female protagonist. That's true. He didn't seem like it. He just, did try to explain cooking to me. And I was like, oh, I heard you. I'm just not doing what you said because I actually know how to do this. So. He, was, he was in a class. He was learning the same thing yep. as you. <laughs> and he decided he would try to tell me how to uh, oh, make pasta dough. And I was like, I will kill you <laughs> with my eyes. Okay, Paradise PD. It's like it's like post Family Guy. Yes, art. I would say is. Oh, I like the description of post Family Guy as a genre. Yeah, yeah. I that's what... Family Guy. I liked it when I was in college. Yeah, Family Guy. Family Guy does have jokes in it. Yes, it does. But it it, it inspired this style that's like randomness is the joke. Yeah. And this was full of that. Nothing felt cohesive. The thing is, the, 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 the style of these Christmas specials that they are trying to look like, they have a lot of tropes that are ripe for parody mm-hmm. that they're just not going for. Yeah. There are easy comedy opportunities. Well, that have been done, too. Like, I mean, in like different ways, like Elf does a funny like riff. Elf off is of, a family friendly version of it. Yeah, As that's someone, true. I don't. That's uh, the, Community did a. Uh, you know, I mean, that was still safe, but there's still plenty of room for these kind of like weird claymation. I just wish that the, the script had gotten a second pass. Um, what if this had gotten several passes? This is what they ended oh up with. God. So it's actually well, I was, it's a bad idea. I was looking up. There's only one writer cr- credited, Alexander Rushfield, who is the showrunner. Creator. She wrote every episode. Uh, yeah, but then there's she should just, have gotten other people. There's a shit ton of producers. Mm. It's like uh, all the way. Seth Green is a producer. Seth Rogen, oh, Sarah Chicken, Silverman, yeah. and then just a, a bunch of people. Like so, it's just a huge amount of. I think it may have been like that thing of everybody is a producer writer. Well, it didn't work out. Yeah, it feels a riff heavy for an animated show. Yeah, <sighs> I what, am. Have we even really covered what happens in the first episode? No, go for it. Okay, so. Uh, the guy is her mentor gets a job at Amazon and suddenly she's in the lead role position. She's her her like, mentor was Santa's chosen successor. Yeah. And then Santa Claus is we're in a universe where Santa is not an immortal being. He, so like when he dies, a new Santa gets picked and takes up the mantle. Right. And he was super excited to be progressive and have a black uh, leader, a black Santa. For I mean, the it's first a reindeer. Time. So is it black? Is it? Is it? No, no the, it, was, it was the a, guy. It was it was a guy. Tim Meadows. Tim Meadows. It looked like Tim Meadows. It was. It yeah. was not a reindeer. It was well, a okay. human I, male. Okay, in my head, that was a reindeer. <laughs> so that's fucked up on my part, and I apologize. There were a lot of reindeer. <laughs> there were a lot of reindeer. He, was, he gave the reindeer a speech where he's like, "You guys got this." Oh, I genuinely was like one reindeer talking to other reindeer. <laughs> sure. I think he's an elf. <laughs> oh, whatever. Yeah. Uh. So yeah. So he. He gets, he's like, I was so excited to have Black Santa, but you know, I guess Lady Santa could hypothetically be a thing, maybe. Yeah. I guess if so, let's all get shaved about it. 
Yeah, there's a weird scene where they're like, as a group of dudes get shaved and she's like, I can't go because I've got plenty of other stuff to do. And he's mad about that. I, I'm sorry, just from like a worker perspective, Maybe I've worked in offices and maybe it's because I'm a lady. I didn't know. But like, do dudes together get shaved and get their balls shaved? David and I do, but not in a professional sense. Okay. Just in a friend's sense. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's, you know, it's hard to get all the areas. So you want to, you have to do it with a buddy. Uh, yeah. yeah. yeah right, right, right. She yeah. was happy to engage in the shaving as well. But then they all said no. No, it's confusing because there are part, bits and parts. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, really, it's doing, the whole show is doing very, like, like I want it to be better about its feminism. Yes, <laughs> I don't like. I don't know if I could ask Is that. Someone of this waving show. A, like waving a hand at like at feminism. Like there is a woman, and therefore feminism. But I, I actual fig- deeper anything? No. I figure it was written by a guy trying to yes. do, but yeah, apparently not. It's it's got like it because it's like oh we want uh, we want a female Santa, but like what happens if she falls in love with the sleigh? That joke got funnier the second time they told it. Or third. I didn't. Re- I blocked out the third time they told it. I thought it. they um, told it three times. So but... the idea that they were like, this is worth repeating yeah. is offensive. Because <laughs> it felt like a placeholder line the first time. Yes. That's, that is where a lot of these, it feels like I, did they, did, was it like they were like, you have this much time to make this show. And they're like, actually, you have this much time to make this show. Yeah. You guys got to hurry. Yeah, your first draft. That's what we're going with. Um, yeah, just like pay people to write a show. Just pay <laughs> pay them and have them with their various perspectives come in and say, that's not funny. Funny would be this, and then we would have a better product. But this, all written by this one person, I'm sorry, it's bad. Isn't that what they were fighting for in the writer's strike? Full yes. writer's rooms? yes. They this, saw Sam Inc. and they were like, never let that yeah, happen again. Yeah. <laughs> you're, we are, you're hurting our industry and the quality we are able to create by not giving us money to make this better. And honestly, we should force <laughs> the executives from Amazon, Disney, um, what is the other guy? ABC, whatever. Yeah. Fuck them. ABC is now owned by Disney. But fuck them. Make them watch this goddamn show Zazzle and off. be like, yeah. this is what happens when you don't fucking pay writers, bitch. Get on it. I like that they think that the the hurt caused by Santa Inc. is greater than the the goodwill from like the White Lotus or Yellowstone because those also had one writer as well. Okay, yeah, but they're yeah, just showing yeah. that it's like way harder. Yellowstone. Than it- okay, he's like, I think we should be able to do that. And the argument against him is this show and what Tyler Perry has been putting out because Tyler Perry at least gets writer rooms sometimes. But during the pandemic, it's just like I write everything. We're making this is bad. It was bad. Oh, I. Uh, we, we haven't kept up. Oh, good. Well, we are. We'll probably do an episode on House of Pain at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. Should. <laughs> Can you two want to come back for House it's of like Pain? Three hundred <laughs> episodes. I'm not doing that because I love myself and I won't do it. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Again, I said it before. My time is valuable. I only have this one precious life, and I'm not using a damn second of it to watch this bullshit. <laughs> I'm so sorry we made you watch this. I, I, I accept your apology. This is a terrible <laughs> Christmas gift. It is. Well, yeah, I guess you would need just the level. They're just they looked at the they were like, we just have all these good people on the cast. Yeah, they'll just riff. They'll stuff. just, they'll, just they'll, they'll, they'll do it in post. We'll, we'll, we'll add it together and it'll become a thing. We'll Rick everybody's Morty. Is that how they make Rick and Morty? Uh, they used to. It was a lot of improv okay. It would be. It write... seemed like it was only the first season. And then all the reports came out of Justin Rowland pretty much ditching after the first season, not even being around. So they couldn't really improv anymore. Wait, which person? Justin Roiland, who co-created it with, okay, thank you. who did the voices. Ah, but then like because well, he been fired by the like, third. By the third, I thought it was the second season. He was just gone essentially. Uh, no, I okay. Third. Anyway, he, he just yeah. stopped showing up at a certain point. It seemed like that is also a show where it's like I'm not. Well, I actually I like Rick and Morty, mm-hmm. but I don't. I don't like the like the impression that Rick and Morty fans have given in the universe, and so yeah. I don't associate with it. Yeah, that is yeah. it's it's definitely a fan. It's like a to- a small toxic part of the fan base. Yes, that's resonating with a lot of the immaturity of it, while simultaneously feeling superior. Uh, Speaking of toxic out. fan bases, I'd like to note if you're a neo Nazi who sees us dunking on Santa Inc., we don't want you. We yeah. hate it for other reasons. Yeah, but if you want to give us five stars on Spotify, please that's we fine. appreciate that. Give them five stars and then uh, drop dead. If you're a neo Nazi, <laughs> yeah. fucking die. Okay. Um, <laughs> sorry, I don't. 
I don't I don't agree with your weird white replacement thing, but you are becoming a smaller percentage of the population and stop trying to fuck white women who are just trying to live their lives and ruining their afternoons by being pieces of shit. Neo Nazis, rotten hell, burn neo Nazi scum. Wow, that's a real strong stance to take against neo Nazis. Yes. Yeah. I know other people are real weak on it, so I figured I'd stand up and say definitively, fuck you. I'm glad we finally got we we'd been pretty neutral yeah. up until this point. We had yeah. kind of Super reason. Ambivalent. We had and I wanted it. to come on here, address it, <laughs> and let the people know. Kinesis fuck listened to a lot of it. episodes, and we've never we've really never come taken out again. Yeah. Nazis until it was, now. It was it was the unsaid part. If you yeah. listen, this it's not the text; it's the subtext. Okay. Yeah, 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 that's. <laughs> Thanks for dragging us into the modern age. Yeah. You know, well. text, subtext, race, sub races. Yes. You get it. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad we're finally speaking of Nazis. Let's get back to the Santa A. Also, fuck old Nazis too. Uh, we were going after neo Nazis. All Nazis, fuck you. Yeah, I don't think a lot of old Nazis listen to podcasts. Probably though. not. So I'm not <laughs> expecting them to come yeah. across them. I mean, they could be sitting in a nursing yeah, home yeah, in Argentina yeah, if, if and just like giving a shot. They already had to learn Spanish. Yeah. So they're yeah. going to learn English too. <laughs> That's weird, by the way. That was the Catholic Church. You know the that, Catholic Church. Did some of the relocation of these. Yeah. People? Okay. Uh, we we're going to talk about the Catholic Church now. Uh, it's weird that they can. Re- it's it's weird Church? that they can relocate all those Nazis, but they can't relocate one priest away from from it from some kids from molestation. Yeah. yeah. No, they can. Dick, they that have often done that. From. Sometimes. Yeah. Those... If it becomes a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Yeah, the Catholic Church also, yeah, they brought Nazis in. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up. I mean, the U.S. government did. If they were good enough scientists, you if you're a good enough scientist, they, like, discount That was just if Nazis you were good enough Catholic. Yeah. It was literally, they were like, listen, Nazis are bad, but you know what's worse? South American communists. Okay. Ugh, That's I'm literally, sorry. they were like, let's just bring Our them fear in. Of communism has made us really have some strange be- bedfellows. I, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's not what this podcast is about okay it can be I, i'm happy to not talk about santa inc <laughs> i mean it is quite bad but uh man oh man uh, the way that we were like we hate communism so bad so we're super into catholicism oddly jesus capitalism like uh, all of this uh, uh. yeah just all the enemy, all the allies you'll make yes oh the allies you'll make <laughs> I know, I honestly think- a good i would like that in a Seuss style yeah um, but just about how like the 20th century led America down this very dark path. <laughs> I mean, it was Which always, ultimately it was, leads to Santa Inc. Yes. Ultimately it leads to Santa Inc. And that's the major problem with it. But I think, yes, I mean, we'd always been doing shitty stuff, but we have a, a darkness of the soul is very visible. Yeah. We didn't really yeah. recover from getting punched one time. One terrorist attack and our mom got scared. Yeah. And she's like, you're moving in with the Patriot Act. And- this is not how I thought this episode was going to go. <laughs> not even close. <laughs> if you had asked me how long it would take us to get to the Patriot Act, I would have said four hours. At- no, it's right there, baby. <laughs> 20 minutes in. 20 minutes? No, 30 minutes oh, okay. in. Okay. Never nice. mind. It's That's a reasonable yeah, that's length reasonable. of time. <laughs> Guys, if you're enjoying the episode, don't forget to follow us all on social media. You can follow Kenise at Kenise Mobley and also check out her great solo show called Don't Kill Yourself Yet at Littlefield in Brooklyn on January 30th. Uh, you can follow me at DPIC Comedy and check out my special Goblin King on YouTube. Also, I'm on TikTok at Lick Grandma 69 Check that out, too. We got Daniel at Daniel F. Crow. And uh, don't forget, rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast. It really helps out. Uh, It helps out with all the dumb algorithm stuff that uh, people care about. And uh, frankly, you want someone to tell people about weird shows, talk about weird shows with, uh, you got to tell them about the podcast. That's the only way this works. Okay, anyway, back to the Christmas episode. Yeah, I just... (laughs) We gotta we gotta shift some stuff around, okay? Um, including the making of this show. I'm not going um, shifting up priorities. <laughs> so, rights for women. Right after we cease shows like this from ever being produced again. You think there's an episode where she like sees the movie The Santa Claus and tries to kill Santa to become Santa? I'll that never would, know. I yeah. would. I would wish that. I wish that would be the case. I was excited when this show came out. I was like, "Oh, this seems fun. I like all the people involved." That's how they get you. 
And then, yeah, we just started watching, and I was like, oh, no thanks. I'm good. Oh, you watched it when it came out? Yeah. Oh. You like, watched all of it? No, I watched oh, okay. like... I was like, what? What? I like half watched this first episode and then like passively the second one came on and then I was like, I'm good. I'm going to okay, switch it. Okay. Then let's do some free work. Okay. Okay. Um, what would a good version of this show be? Not with the wave to feminism, not with the complete non sequiturs and uh, work culture that would be considered criminal. Like what, how would the show be good with the el- the elf as the center and there's a charming santa who's considering leaving the santa position the good version of this is succession okay (laughs) that's what this is it has um what's his face um yeah cousin Cousin greg Greg is in this yeah yeah Yeah. i have not watched succession Hmm. uh the first episode i was like these people are all mean and bad (laughs) i don't I don't want to spend time with these mean and bad people. Well, it gets worse for them. Oh, okay. It consistently gets worse. (sighs) You could go the King Lear route with Santa, where you have three people like vying for it. Yeah. And then it eventually drives Santa insane, and he's stuck out in the North Pole in like a polar winter. So he just dies in the snow? Well, no. I mean, he's driven insane in the snow. Yeah. And then, you know, comes back and, yeah, maybe they do have to kill Santa at the end of the season. And that's how you become Santa. Okay. That's the real secret. Yeah. Or that just, would be interesting. Just jokes. Jokes. Actual jokes. Okay. Rather than just cursing. Yeah. Maybe actual satirical elements because they sort of try to do things about modern corporate culture, but never really go in all oh, the they way. Don't. They really don't. Like, they bring up Jeff Bezos. So there's clearly some distaste towards Amazon. Yeah. If you really want to lean into that, show that Santa doesn't like let the elves take bathroom breaks or something yes. like that. <laughs> like, oh, just make him actually like Jeff Bezos yeah. in every way. Yeah, that yeah. would be. Because it is a major distribution conundrum. Yeah. That's the company that's doing distribution like that. And so with the plot line being like, she doesn't think she'll ever get to be Santa because she's a woman. But then they've already established that he's actually fairly progressive out of all the Santas because he was going to appoint a black successor. Yeah. So he's already like not a bad guy as we're watching it. But if he was more like Bezos and actually exploiting everyone that worked underneath him Mm -hmm. and she wants to become Santa to return essentially the Christmas spirit to the North Pole, Mm -hmm. we're a bit more invested in her as a character. We believe in her journey, her goals, and you can get, you know, interesting satirical points about modern capitalism in there. You really could. Yeah. But no. Instead, we get, man, it's tough to be a mom. I'm going to sleep in some taffy. Yeah. Yeah. One time the cookie eats herself, but then it's healed in the next scene for no reason. (laughs) Yes. Um, I just also the character design didn't feel like consistent to me. Like just the visuals of this gingerbread woman look very different from the visuals of the elf look very different from the visuals of these other things. The snowflake was very different. Yes. And I was like, I. I can see if this was drawn like um, actual animation, regular animation, but when you make it physical, it suddenly br- draws attention to the fact that like, wait, some people have hair, some people don't. Like the bunnies have like a furry texture, but that texture doesn't seem to exist in the same way in the North Pole where we don't have certain things. Like I just visually, well, I wasn't a fan of how it looked. Well, it's the thing where uh, the animation, often in a first season of a show, the animation is much rougher. Right. Because people don't know if they're going to invest the money it takes. And then you also have all the character design already done. Yeah. So then you can then work on remastering it and rendering it. Like, the first season of The Simpsons is ugly. I've heard that. Uh, And so, like, you're getting that thing where you're getting a lot of inconsistent tones, but the writing's not there to make it good yes so if the writing's not there then they don't ever go through the thing of making it look pretty and formalizing it and making everybody in the same texture and tone i i'm saying all this also with the understanding that like if any of these people were to offer me a job obviously i would want it um so i would be on santa inc season two in a second uh yeah 100 percent, because i would like to work with many of these people but sometimes even with the best intentions uh things are garbage and you should still hire me though <laughs> Let's talk about the bottle episode. Do you want us to bleep out your name on this episode no. in case they ever hear it? No, no, no. I'm, yeah. I'm. I do think about that. I would defend most of the points I make on this show. Like if someone like was like, "You really think this about it?" I'd be like, "Yeah, I, I do." 
and I'm I, I'm so excited to work on making the second season better. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're gonna be on Tubi next year. Yeah. We'll build a Santa Inc. back better. <laughs> <laughs> Santa Inc. season Tubi. Oh God. Well, y- y- who knows? I don't know what they're doing. Uh, let's talk about the second episode. Okay. The highest rated episode of the show. The highest two point nine rated the same as the pilot. <laughs> I mean, it's rated higher than the show as a whole. Um, I think that if we're talking 14-year-olds, they're like, yay, there's fucking in this. There's um, a lot of violence. And violence. I love fucking. I'm a 14-year-old, and I love fucking and violence. And this one has both. Yeah, so I'm the, rating it high. It feels like Happy Tree Friends. What is some, that? It was an edgy cartoon from like the mid-2000s that sold a lot of merch at Hot Topic. Oh. Was it, I think it might have been online only. Yeah, it was online. It was like a yeah. flash animation show. Got there it. Like a bunch of, of forest characters that killed each other. And Cute all that. animals that all wow. get murdered. This, this, just saying they sold merch at Hot Topic is so indicative of what it is and who the fan base is and all that. That's... I bet they sold merch for this at Hot Topic. Oh, God. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Just Santa fucking himself with an elf or something. Oh, my God. <laughs> Just flashback memories to middle school. And it's essentially like um, fun dip, but they put it in a tube. And it's like, ooh, it's like crazy chemicals. I'm taking crazy chemicals. Ugh. And being like, yeah. And someone was like, you got to snort it. And so us snorting this sugar garbage because we were trying to be edgy. 14-year-olds are dumb. This show is dumb. This show is for them. <laughs> Sorry. Great logic True. argument at the end of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this this episode was called Spring Awakening. And uh, so. It's the best thing with that title ever. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Go after the theater kids, our main demo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Sarah Silverman's Candy Smalls uh, is interviewing. She feels like she won't be able to get her job as Santa. So she interviews with the Easter Bunny to make Santa Claus jealous. Easter Bunny voiced by Patton Oswalt. Yep. In a role that has been described as um, paying his mortgage payment that month. Oh, that's nice. Probably, I Good assume. Time. Yeah. We're standing. I'm standing. Yeah, I'm just on a stool over here. Oh, I need okay. to, yeah. For me, I never wear jeans. And I'm like, is this supposed to be like less comfortable? I usually wear skirts and stuff. But oh, that makes more. I was like. <laughs> jeans are just like not that comfortable to me. And I'm like, why are. Everyone's like, whoa, you got to wear jeans. And so I'm trying jeans, but. I don't know, man. I might go back to skirts. Normally. I have such admiration for your anything but talking about Santa Inc. attitude right now. (laughs) Yeah, it's not. I mean, it just doesn't warrant our critical minds. (laughs) Like, it's not bad. Yeah. I mean, we can go into why it's bad. Welcome to bottle episodes. (laughs) In in this episode, okay, so yeah, she's tr- she wants to be the next Santa to get this thing. She goes to, I guess, Easter Island or whatever. They well, he's just fired the yes. Peter Rabbit, the head of Easter. Yes, has fired his daughter because she kept getting rabbit abortions. Four hundred. Yeah, yeah, get it. Uh, they rabbits fuck a lot and have a lot of kids. This is wow. news to me. Oh, you didn't know like fucking like rabbits? Yeah, you never yeah, heard that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, played by A.D. Bryant. Petunia? That's... Yeah, and uh, Peter Rabbit's son that is like against him is also an SNL alum. I just yeah, remember which Beck one. Yeah, Bennett. Yeah, there we go. This is so embarrassing for them because they're not like... <laughs> I like those people. No. And if it was like, ooh, Beck Bennett's in a thing when he was in Shrill, I was like so excited. Um, I am such a fan of his individually. And that, that this would be included in, yo, you want to be a completist? You got to watch this? <laughs> you gotta, you gotta, you gotta fill us the whole back uh, continuum. Yeah, and I don't like it. You have to listen to the just the band back. <laughs> that's not a band. That's a guy. Okay, well, listen he's to a him. solo and honestly, artist. Honestly, he's got some good songs. I don't know if he was like a Scientologist or he has left or whatever. Though. What? He's left. He's not Scientologist. He's left. Anymore. He's not. Okay, then I feel better about it. But I don't know, man. I feel back better. <laughs> you could you could have done better than that. What did you I work on have. this show? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> so again, if you worked on the show, I am sorry, and please um hire me. <laughs> if you worked on the show, I don't hold it against you. Yeah, it has all, it, it. See, it seems like a great thing. If someone was like, "Hey, I'm coming to you. This show is led by Sarah Silverman and Seth Rogen. It's got Tim Meadows. It's the cast all star." 
Yeah. Like an, an edgy Christmas show yeah. could happen. And be good. It could. Yeah. The, it makes sense on paper. Yes. Maria Bamford was in this? Yeah. As oh, who? no. Yeah. I don't know. I'm just she looking at Mrs. Claus. She was Mrs. Claus? Oh, I did. I thought that was kind of funny. Just the weirdness of Mrs. Claus just being like, oh, well, I'll just. Oh, you want me to go? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah okay. Maria Bamford doing Maria Bamford things. Well, she's very talented. Yeah. Uh, and so then they, she goes out to meet with the Easter Bunny. But her uh, mom hangs on to the bottom of the plane because she's insatiably horny for the Easter Bunny. You know how we all are. Yeah. She's been whacking off to the Easter Bunny. Or uh, she's like, oh, well, I, that was one joke I did like. But she was like, I've mastered, mastered, mastered the art of touching myself. That was okay. That was okay. The rest of them were bad. Um, and also, <laughs> I I swear <laughs> to God, if my mom ever told me who she was masturbating about, I'd leave. I She wouldn't see me anymore. The only thing that would disgust me more that my mom could tell me is if she said she liked Santa Inc. Ooh, yeah. I would question. My I'd mom like, masturbated to Santa Inc. We have, we're very cool. <laughs> if, if my mom said she liked Santa Inc., I would be like, we are going to discuss putting you in a home because I don't <laughs> know if you have the mental capacity to... Dementia's fully set in yep, if, you're, yep, yep, if yep, you yep. like this show. Yep. There was a moment in the first episode where they introduced Santa as the hardest working man in snow business. And I literally thought to myself, the show's not going to get better than that. <laughs> and it didn't. <laughs> That's why it peaked. Yikes. Uh, yeah. The uh, So the whole B plot is that uh, her mom is just going to fuck Peter Rabbit. No, that's not the B plot. The B plot is Santa goes to a frat. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I blocked that out. Yeah, you and got drunk why, alongside okay. Santa. <laughs> I don't know if, you, if these people have spent much time around corporate structures, but the idea that an intern would suddenly have this much power with the CEO is strange, that there wouldn't be additional layers in there. And he would just, I'm sorry. Actually, that's a lot like succession. Oh, It's also a lot like something Bill Clinton did. Oh, I didn't like it. And also, who is this? You're just going to, I'm sorry. Uh, maybe that's just that I fear for my safety, but if someone's like, yeah, come ha- hang out with me all day, I'd be like, where are we going? Give me details. Well, he bonded because it's the same frat he belonged to when he was okay. in college. Is it, and there's only one university in the North Pole? Or something? I think he was wearing a, like a sweatshirt for the university, and then Santa was like, "That's I went there. And then they bonded. Is there another place to go? Um, yeah, I think you can do DeVry <laughs> out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. They, they, they have the internet. Yeah. In the North Pole? Don't they? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know for sure, but it seemed to me like they were clearly setting up that he was going to pick that guy to be successor instead. Yeah. And then it was he was going to be bad at it. And then in the last episode, Sarah Silverman would end up taking up Is that all what, the responsibilities. Do what actually I don't know what happens, but it felt that, like that's what they were telegraphing. That feels to like that feels correct. Yes. Yeah. I mean, listen. I, I, we're not, we're not going to spoil anything by looking ahead. No. But yeah, uh, that was the intern was played by cousin greg from succession Uh. so they must have intentionally thought there were succession parallels Mm. uh yeah so santa names his successor doesn't say who it is but we'll see if cousin greg's in the episode i'm sure he is uh yep nicholas broad is in the episode okay i knew his name i've been calling him cousin greg the whole time it's gonna be hard for him to ever shake that role (laughs) <laughs> like i knew his name i haven't even watched and the show then, and i know cousin greg yeah. is what people call him and then uh candy Lee, and then the final episode candy leads the santa ink workers in a walkout on christmas eve yeah so it wasn't her and it's probably yeah so maybe there are more yeah. more corporate parallels like i was saying um i just do it better uh just be better <laughs> As you fade out into the distance. Yeah, just, there, just I just want to say, we've done probably like 30 of these episodes at this point. There's a real sadness in your voice that I haven't heard from any other guests. I just, this show really seems to have broken you, and I'm so sorry. I don't, like, I went to film school. I've tried <laughs> to work on things. I know how hard it is to get something made. It's so frustrating that I know people who are toiling in obscurity and will die unknown who never get to realize their vision. We're right here. (laughs) (laughs) And that they're like, no, no, we need to give money to this thing. And it's like, 
I understand the impulses that led you to do that, but this is so bad. And it kind of hurts my heart a bit because, but we could have nice things. <laughs> and the studios are like, no, you can't have nice things. You're going to swallow more of this. <laughs> And that's that is sad to me. This has really broken your Christmas spirit, hasn't it? Uh, my, I, I am the weirdest person about Christmas. Uh, in public, no. With my family, I'm the person who decorates the house. I make sure the tree is lit. I make sure the presents are divided into piles for each person. That we have matching pajamas, mugs, hot chocolate, the works on Christmas morning. I fucking love it. Last night, do you know what I was doing? I was making gingerbread, bitch. I fucking <laughs> love that shit. And it's my private thing. <laughs> this, and, yeah. And this took it, it from me. me. <laughs> yeah. This was like, wow. I, there are bad Christmas things as well. And uh, I have to intentionally ignore this to continue my private cheeriness. The bad man is on Tubi. He can't hurt you anymore. Yeah, he can't. Because I'm not going back to Tubi. I'm not going back to Tubi. Not going. <laughs> to be or not to be. I'm so did, sorry. Did the, is, are you, they may have done that. Because they probably have done that. Ugh, it's probably in the fucking show. But we just <laughs> aren't going to watch. Uh, well, no, because they didn't think they were going to be on Tubi. They were punished by going to Tubi. <laughs> Sorry, that's very funny to me. Uh, does anything else? What else happens in the episode? The mom fucks the rabbit. They and have a rebellion on Easter Island. Yeah, and all then, the rabbits, and killed. then the rest yeah. of the rabbits. Yeah, There's, it's very bloody. They become and violent. zombies. They become zombies for no reason. Yeah, no, that that sort of spirituality has not been discussed prior to this moment. <laughs> that there is zombies. That there are bodies, but they're not like souls separately, and it's a whole mess. Oh, there's also a taffy issue. Yeah, that chick gets stuffed in taffy, and it's the first time she gets to sleep. Her whole thing, I don't really like, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, her whole thing was just like, can I, I be the gro- can I be the grossest mom? Yeah, it's yeah. It, it's also not how gingerbread cookies would work. When you bake them, they would come out fully formed. They don't have an aging process. Yeah, or, she has a baby gingerbread cookie. No, I understand, but I think that is really picking. Uh... Also, have have none of the of cookie bits logic. got stuck in taffy. It's hot yeah. taffy, okay? She doesn't dissolve a little bit. Come on. I'm just saying, if you want a character that's like, it's got to be the mother or something to put that plot line in, just have it be, because there are all kinds of beings in the North Pole in this universe. They yes. all coexist. Just have one with an aging process. <laughs> Cookies cannot age. <laughs> they can't grow. Honestly, I did think about how nice it would be to like have a taffy bath. That f- I thought that would be pretty nice. Taffy bath would be a great indie band name. It is a great indie band name. I, David, I worry about you because <laughs> that seems disgusting and messy. But like just warm and like like Ugh. just very like Ugh. it's like it's like a weighted blanket that's warm. Have Give you're... me a warm weighted blanket then, because taffy is sticky everywhere. And just imagine like stickiness. I'm sorry, I don't want stickiness in folds ever. That sounds guys. Check out me, me and my band Taffy Bath. will be at the Brooklyn Electric. You ever seen those machines that pull taffy? Yeah, yeah. Would you ever want to be in one of those? Yeah, I'm into it. Jesus, I guess why. You would be reason. killed. Yeah. Well, oh, oh. If it's, I, I assume we. Oh, you think you're nut. taking the form of taffy? I thought we're taking a low stakes. It's a, it's a low pressure version of that machine. Okay. But I feel like getting stretched out like that would probably be feel pretty nice. We could tie horses to your feet and arms. Yeah, <laughs> you get stretched out. Oh, drawn and quartered. Yeah, yeah, yeah No thanks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Turns out I do have a limit, guys. That's your limit, being separated by horse. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we wouldn't make them go far. Just enough. To, just, just enough. A, just, a, just, a, just enough to stretch me out. Yeah, just enough to stretch you out. Well, okay, okay. How about this? Uh, we put my arms and legs into. We spread them out and put them on things. Then we attach that, and then we use a crank. And every time we pull first it, of all, hot. It stretches me a little further. Yeah, I think that is a thing. Yeah, no, I, I know. Yeah. I was, yeah, I was like, describing a different torture you, device. You would, you would know, but yeah, that that's a, that's a thing. <laughs> uh, look, if you're gonna torture yourself, what if you just watch every episode of Santa Inc.? That is, oh, no, I, I never. imagine just like the sick S and M. Oh, you're, oh, you, you like that, don't you? You're oh, watch, play you're another, watch episode. another episode. Oh no, <laughs> like clockwork orange style, like your eyes are taped open and you ah, have to watch. Ah, ah, ah. Oh, we're going another episode. There was They're a, too Jewish. I can't handle it. There was a moment when I was watching on Tubi, and Tubi said, uh, 
Would you like to sign up for a free account to keep no. your progress? I was like, no. No. Who do you think you are? For Please this? forget. I've never that done I was this. Here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what my favorite life bits to do. Whenever someone asks if I want a receipt, I'm like, actually, can we forget this ever happened? Yeah. In fact, tell nobody. Well, that's a good place to end the episode. <laughs> Wait, okay. What, yeah. uh, what would you do to improve the uh, show? I would hire writers. Hire more writers. Yes. Not just all producers. No, not just all producers. And especially when it's like producers. Oh, this is a name that you recognize. But is Seth Green a good writer? I don't know. Is Seth yeah, I mean, Green a robot chicken? It's not for me, but people he's, like yeah. it. He's also the exact person you want on a show like this. Well, okay, not if you like, want it to be elevated. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Rude. Just, <laughs> no, nah. Just uh, hire uh, different people and uh, have like a second round of edits and. Uh, you know, maybe do some testing with viewers before you release this as a big holiday thing. Wow, more executives. Mm. Uh, just like some, just some audience feedback. So just have some people watch it, write down their thoughts, maybe think about it for a second, just like a, just to give it another beat. Yeah, I. There should be like, there's no way this went through test audiences. Yes, exactly. Because like a, at a one point seven, the test audiences would have been rough. Yes. Unless that would be like L.A. is just the weird bubble where they yeah, like L.A. It. is like, oh, my God, I heard Cousin Greg was in this. Isn't it great? That's how L.A. people sound to me. <laughs> Take them down. Yeah. Take them down a notch. Yeah. My advice for improving it wouldn't be for the show itself. It would be for Tubi. I think if you want people to take you seriously as a streaming service, be more selective about what cast offs you'll take from other streaming services. By all means, if they're offering you King Richard, host that. Sure, that's wow. that's a film people liked generally, but don't host this. Oh, by the way, my mistake. This does have a writing staff. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, but everybody, it seems like everybody, yeah, got credit for one episode. I mean, it's yeah, it seems like people who would be good. Okay. Well, then I I have to rescind my my suggestion uh, for hiring writers because it seems that you did that, and yet. Um, the situation remains the same, so I'd say better audience testing <laughs> and uh, do a second draft. Yeah, there are a lot of producers on this show too. I feel like even if they wrote a script, it would be a lot of like getting it like switched around and right. like people just kind of saying their lines. Although it's animated, so you can't do that as much. Do you think <laughs> Seth Rogen gets sad about the fact that his popularity went down immensely when he stopped working with James Franco? Because he did the right thing and it has hurt him. I think he's no, doing he's all right back up with, with Evan house, Goldberg. Like with the weed business, I think he's doing like, he, oh. I think he has like people like him. I'm sure he's not struggling, but yeah. like his or like, films and, he was, like, and shows kind of, aren't doing as well. He did like a, a zaddy transformation where it's like, oh, he's like, is Seth broken hot now? And like he's in the long shot and stuff like that where he's like a hot guy now who just like smokes weed and does pottery. So I don't know, man. I follow From him on Instagram. From one pot to now. another. Wait, what? From one pot to another. Yeah. I mean, so this is basically uh, like looking at all the people that wrote on it. It's uh, a lot of the people made platonic, which I really love. Platonic's great. Uh, it, it's uh, Seth Rogen and Rose Byrne. Not oh, fucking. Is that the show you're recommending? I think so. I'm going to recommend platonic. Platonic's great. Yeah. It, from the same people. Really enjoyed it. It it balances a lot of the emotional pathos a lot better. Okay. All right, uh, Kinnis, do you want to recommend a show? I recommend just watch Rick and Morty, dude. Just if Hell you, yeah. If you want to watch something that's like a, hey, let's get high and like be silly and stuff, watch that. And only like it, it gets deep every once in a while. And I really fucking like that. So, but I don't want to hang out with anyone who else who likes Rick and Morty. <laughs> I just, <laughs> I like it for me, but you should watch it, but not be part of its toxic fan base. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much the same as when we said neo Nazis not welcome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What you got a show? Uh Charlie Brown Christmas. Get some warmth in your heart again. <laughs> oh yeah. Maybe I'll I'll put that on. I'll yeah. put that on. Yeah. Honestly, we'll just tru- put that music on after the episode as like a palate mm-hmm. cleanser. And we're, as the music plays, I want everyone to know that we're doing the Charlie Brown dances. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. We actually yeah, we look like a group that would know too many Charlie Brown dances for sure. Quick favorite Charlie Brown dances. We're all doing them. Perfect. Good night, everybody. You didn't. Reckon, oh, you didn't say what you do to make it better. It feels like none of the jokes are informed by the like the. It they feel lazy, mm-hmm. and that is uh, 
Can I just say a comment about you calling the jokes lazy? What? To all listeners, he has been lounging the whole record. <laughs> <laughs> just laying back the <laughs> whole time. We've yeah. been feeding Come him. To us. We've Come been, to me. We've been feeding him grateful. I sit on a stool. <laughs> <laughs> Good night.